Okay, it's one o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. And roll call, Martha. Here. Sue. Here. And I'm here. Okay, first thing on the agenda is the discussion regarding the Duncan Lake Road study. Uh, we have Bruce Stewart here from the Planning Board and Rick Cousins, who's the zoning officer and building officer, and is also the Planning Board ex officio member. We have TJ, Matt, Board, and Nancy Paul. Your name? Barbara Barton. 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 Thank you, Ray. So, Bruce, do you want to give us a little background on the planning board? Or right now, we were kind of at, just to kind of keep it focused and narrowed on, on, uh, on the scope. It's basically, has everybody, first of all, thank you for going ahead and meeting with us so that we can kind of get this resolved and some answers prior to the next planning board meeting. Um, what we kind of like to find out, uh, has, has everybody had a chance to read the uh, Goro Palma study that was done and get some ideas on that, the recommendations and on the conclusion of the study? On the recommendations, what we're trying to find out, uh, if this were to be approved, what would the conditions or what type of conditions would be placed upon this approval uh, for this to go ahead and go through? Meaning, what would what would the town be able to do or willing to do in, in regards to meeting these conditions or addressing any of them? That's what we kind of want to find out. Do you want to speak to that? You did an you, you did a thorough reading of it, came up with an analysis of the cost to the town to do what that report requires. So as you can see on the letter there that we put together, there's a a graph, and it will show the group the, the top one grading is. We're going to have to do it probably three additional times with the added truck traffic. And what the regular grading is going down, grading it, watering it, just to try to keep it smooth. Um, the biggest issue we have on Duncan Lake Road, it's the most problemsome road in the town because of dust. We can put calcium chloride on it one day, and with 150 trucks a day, it just beats the fines out of the road and becomes dustier and dustier. And it, we just can't put enough out. It'll yeah. keep it not dusty. We're going to have to do this four more times on top of what we do it on right now. It's about $7,000 every time we do it. Then we do a full grading, everything. So with an additional two times, it's $14,200, $288, give or take, to, to do this. So four times, TJ? It's additional two times, but the, uh, that's just the calcium in. The four, okay. It's additional four gradings, but... Okay. Two, two of them with the calcium. The roadside ditching, right now we do the roadside ditching with a guy in a backhoe. He goes down and cleans the water, turns out, turnouts. But if you look at the recommendations, it wasn't a high thing on their list, but they wanted a, a defined ditch the whole way of the road. Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to take a lot of material with the grader and make a defined ditch all the way down through the road. Yes, it will improve the road, give a little bit more width, but that's going to be an additional $7,600 to do that. You have to spend probably two to three days down there doing it. Um, and with the roadside mowing, we right now we send a guy down with a pole saw and the power saw, and they trim it out a little bit to keep it. You know, it's an old, it's a it's a dirt yeah. road. With after looking at that, with sight distances, everything, we're going to have to hire a boom mower. They're going to come in and mow it back, and it was about two grand to hire him. Plus, I'm going to have to chip the brush once it's cut. Um, so those are the addition. Just to go by the recommendations, that covers all the. You know, we're gonna have to lay some more gravel out. Right now, the pit that's at the end of the road supplies us with any gravel that we put on the road. Um, I don't know if that will last after. I don't believe it will. If there's a if there's another pit in there, they're not gonna supply it for us. But and, that, and that's four or five hundred yards a year. A year that we put on. It's about 170 to 180 yards every time we do it. But in there it said there was fines, a little too much fines in the gravel. But in, in my opinion, I could put gravel on that today and tomorrow there's going to be too many fines because you have 100,000 pound trucks over and over it turns stone to dust. It's just, you can't, all in all the report made, like Rick and I talked, made the highway department look good because it, it's in really good shape. It's just... Really, it's a perfect road for that amount of traffic because there's so much gravel on it. But to do these improvements, it's going to cost, like the, the, the cost is about $31,500 for, you know, to get these improvements done and to keep it maintained. I think the dust control is going to be our biggest expenditure. 
Yeah, because the base that they had mentioned and the plugs that they took, um, they were looking at, I guess, an average on the eight plugs that they took, about 36 inches of a good substrate yeah. oh, base. very good gravel, yeah. And um, with wood, I'm just curious on, uh, on, on the fines. Would that have to be done like that every year, TJ, or could, could, could the dust control help alleviate some of that if, if there was more focus on, say, the dust control instead of the, the uh, four to five hundred yards? Oh, yeah, I'm know, sure. Is it, could, we, could we play with some stuff? Oh, yeah, I'm sure the dust control we could, and with approval from, from the people, if we, we put more dust control on it, it already gets twice as, any, twice as much as any road in the town. And we visit that road 10 times per year, last year. That means we might have been down there for road trimming, for ditching, for graveling. We were down there 10 <clears> times. <throat> and with additional, with what the additional trucks that, what I've heard is between 75 and 80 trucks a day, which turns out to be, you know, 160 trips, because they're going to go in and out. We're probably going to be down there an additional nine times, so almost double. The other thing I wanted to ask you on the ditching, and I've read the report a bunch of times. I yep. didn't see in there on uh, the recommendation for ditching the entire road. I thought, I thought it had said you guys had done a great job on 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 the swales or the or the cutoffs that you guys had put in. And what I thought they said was the only recommendations on those were just uh, continued maintenance. And you've done a good job. Most of them are working. There might be one or two that builds a silt after a, after yeah. a rainstorm that might have to just be cleared with a, with, a, with the bucket. But it, from what I understood in the report, it looked as though the maintenance was perfect on it, on that. I think a little bit of it was about the width, too, because in some places we're a lot narrower, and ditching it will make it wider. Putting a real defined ditch will be able to take a greater haul the dirt in. We, if we go ahead and do that, we won't get all that silt in those wash turnouts to either. It'll kind of run with the road. I talked with Rick too, that ground down there is so sandy, you, you can pour and you have no mud puddles. And yeah. It's just the way it is. You talk when it runs off to the side. When it runs off yeah. to the side, there is no ditches down there, it's just the road, but it's, it's so sandy. sandy when it hits the sides, it just soaks it up like well, a I went, I went down to the to Duncan Lake Road uh, uh, right after the meeting on Tuesday night, and we had those torrential rains after we had the planning board meeting, and there wasn't a puddle to be found on the road. There was a little bit of washboarding down towards the end with a hill with a hill coming up from the from the gravel pit, okay. uh, but I didn't notice any ponding whatsoever. Everything was 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 run, running off the road and draining into the sides of the road. Yeah, because they had mentioned in the study that it was it perked really good. All, it percolated through all the uh, the uh, the base soils that were off the road, and that there wasn't really a, a water issue. You know, when it did rain, uh, just had recommendations regarding the, the runoff, um, I don't know if you just call them a runoff cut? Yeah, they're just water turnouts we make every once in a while. And they did put in there, I know there was a part that said um, that due to the trees it would be a huge undertaking to actually ditch it, but with the mower that we're going to rent it, it'll take care of it, we can ditch it. And it would improve the road, <coughs> it would help with sight distance as well, because if we maintain a ditch then we don't have the I think in the long run, doing the ditching, it would save the town if we have to keep up to these standards because sight distance was a big thing in the recommendations. And if we don't do the ditching, it's just going to grow in and we're going to have to mow it every year. So the ditching would kind of help with that as well, make a little bit wider road. And so on that recommendation, it would be a ditching, say, just uh, not an annual, but an initial, and then... That, and then the, the grading would be that much probably the first time and then it would go down after that because we wouldn't have to pull so much material. But the ditches still have to be maintained because they get full of ground. Yes, they still have to be maintained. It just won't be as many as much material taken from the location. All right, so then if we do, if, if that were to be uh, a part of the, the subject matter, the initial ditching, the length of the road, uh, would basically be cost, cost effective in the long run. Yeah, it would. Okay. Yeah. Just trying to see. Does anybody know right off the top on the site distance graph that they had provided on which properties or which uh, lot?
five say fell. Yeah, it's in page three. So right now, based on on um, twelve point three three or twelve semicolon three three, we've got three of these driveways um, that are not meeting the site distance. Have you had a chance just to look at those ones? I have, and I did a little bit of research, and I need to do I I do need to do more on it. But what I found from looking at a book that I have is we're responsible for sight distance coming out to the end of a road. So like if we have two town, we have a town road that comes up to a state road or a town road that comes up to a town road, we're responsible for that sight distance. We can't be responsible for everybody's driveway yeah. and the sight distance out of it. But the reason that's why I got did the cost analysis with the mower because that's going to take care of everybody's sight distance. We also look at sight distance around the corner too. I know just before you get to the pit at the end there's a pretty good corner. Yep. If when we mow that, if we take that out 20 feet, you're going to be able to see more vehicle coming Yeah, you can actually, in that picture, you can actually see that you would be able to see around that rise yeah. right into the uh, the apex of the corner. So that's the good reason of having that mower. That mower also tends to not mow outside of the the right-of-way because it only mows a certain <laughs> certain distance. And if he doesn't go out any further, it keeps us in the right-of-way. Okay. All right, so those are answered. And one of the things that was brought up the other night by one of the uh, people who lived down there was Acorn under Duck and Lake, but Acorn is not a, a town. It's a private area. road. It's a private yeah. road. The only ones on there are Cleveland Beach and um, Guile. Guile. All right, so brush cutting or speed limits. Um, as far as enforcement, um, I know it's posted right now at 25. Is that something that could be um, addressed with, uh, with our police department? I just, you know, me. We've talked about it in the past, directing the PD to go over there and, and look at the speeds. We can lower the speed limit if that's going to have an impact or not. I don't know, but it would make it easier to do enforcement with a lower speed limit. That's the thing. Because if it's 25, people have a tendency to go 30 or 35. Right. And if it's 15 or 20, they'll probably do 25. That's just the nature of the way people are. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so. And you know, maybe, or we're looking at maybe some kind of signage. And, I, and again, these aren't just my, aren't my opinions. I'm just trying to give out a representation of all the questions that were thrown around the board uh, from the folks that were uh, from Duncan Lake that came, from the board members that had questions regarding getting some answers for this right here. Um, maybe some, some signage at the beginning that could, you know, a strictly enforced type uh, signage that would, you know, really let both the residents and the truck traffic know that, you know, that this is going to be being policed and, and that the speed limits are going to have to be adhered to. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. Those are easy ones. I think we have a sign that says uh, speed limits strictly enforced down at the garage. All right, another question that came up, um, and this is another one just to throw out there. Um, yeah, this individual is looking at, um, because it is a legal and lawful right of way that he has from that back pit through the front pit to the, uh, to the mouth of, the, of Duncan Lake Road, which is a town-maintained road. They or uh, question, do, does, does Mr. Angelini even have a responsibility um, to help contribute toward maintaining that road? I just wanted to see if, you know, because it is a legal access, it is to a town road, um, can he be made to partake in the maintenance of that? Did we get, didn't we get a legal opinion on that? I believe the legal opinion says that, that yes, you, yeah. you can make that a condition. Right. Yeah. If that is so, how would you determine the percentage on that? What would be the best you know, way? Because we just want to be able to come back with something that if this were to be approved, we don't want like an open-ended type thing to put into a, a condition. We want something that's, that's specific or um, you know, that Mr. Angelini would know what he would be responsible for. That is the amount that TJ did an assessment there. Well, I would think this would be totally so he would be responsible for the full Because this is months. above and beyond what's presently That's done right. I mean, this for that is road. in addition to what they're already doing down there. Okay. That's what this, correct, TJ? This is yeah. above and beyond what's existing. And then at the end, it says this amount will obviously increase over time as materials and wages increase. Right. I mean, it, it, what's the federal cost of. Uh, so for the, the federal money that is being distributed for 
for state and local governments, they calculate that 4.1% is the amount of growth on a municipal budget or cost of Cost per municipality. So that's per year? Per year. Okay. So we're anticipating this cost to go up accordingly beyond the initial amount. So if this were the initial then, we could probably forego the roadside ditching for the next couple of years? After probably not the full it, amount, but a partial amount. Yeah, it wouldn't be the full 14, of course, I mean the, the, the first, it's hard to tell obviously, you know what yeah. I mean? If, the dust control is hard to tell because this year obviously we're going to put more than we ever have because it looks like it's going to be a dry summer. If, it's, if you have a lot of rain, you don't have to do as much. But. I mean, up to the board, I have a program that can show the, you know, what we have to do and what, this is just a, a projection of what the extra will be on top of what we're doing. Okay. So, so my question to you as the planning board, if the board agrees to this, this plan TJ put forth to us with a cost, and we impose this cost as a condition to the planning board, and the planning board puts that on the pick, what's the mechanism of enforcement in the future to ensure that he complies with, with that condition. It's well, not the site plan, I, I guess? I, I would imagine, yeah, I guess it would be not conforming to uh, conditions that would be put into the approval, but would it also fall under the auspice of, say, uh, even like the, the whole issue, the other issue that we would we kind of dealt with, would there be an RSA that would bring him into where he has an actual signed contract with the town regarding the maintenance of that? Or would it be a, I think a financial contribution? You mean like a bond? Well, yeah, but, but like when we were talking about the other issue, yeah. which you could almost correlate this in, in certain ways regarding maintenance and so forth of the road, um, would that be something that would have to be like a contract between him and the town that would be drawn up and then signed and then, and then registered at the Registry of Deeds? The only difference with that other one was that road was, it's not... It's not a public access road. It's a it's a class, class six, six road. Um, we don't do any maintenance on it. We just make sure it's open. This is a maintained, you know, this is a class five road. I mean, yeah. everyone has the right to travel it. I I don't know. If that's beyond me to know. Yeah, if I mean, I can part do of the that. problem, and we were talking about this, is the property's in Effingham, so we don't have an enforcement mechanism from say zoning or, or that effect on that property. I mean, the right of way is through an Osity property, but. That's all we have. We can't necessarily block that off. No, I, right. I don't think so we can. I think it, the best enforcement mechanism would be a contract between the town and that pit owner to ensure that this is paid and a site plan condition on the site plan. All right. I just want to make sure I'm clear. So if we did go forth with this, the condition that we would probably be looking for is a full $31,000 onto the condition of an approval. Correct. Okay. With X to amount, start with. right? Yeah. To start with, and again, start again, it's going to escalate because our cost go every year things that we can't control. I would okay. think the board would want to determine that percentage now, wouldn't you? So you can make a schedule. Of yeah, well, I think that federal four point one percent is a good place to start um, going forward. I mean, or flat four percent, or whatever. All right. So it's going to be I guess that's really about it. And one thing I think we need to do is confer with legal on the merits of a contract of this nature um, with the pit owner going forward. When's the next planning board meeting? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. So if get an expedited opinion on that. Well, the, the legal guidance already was very clear that we can make this a condition. Right, no, I know we can do the condition, but necessarily a signed contract, and we force a signed contract. In other words, if you don't sign this contract, the condition will not be approved. That's what I mean. Yeah, because I know that, you know, I mean, when without legal representation at the, the planning board meeting, and pursuant to the results of the survey, what the planning board is, as far as their decision on an approval, is basically on is the adequacy of the Route 16 Duncan Lake intersection adequate to handle the traffic, which the survey has shown that it is, and then the adequacy of the road to um, support the additional truck traffic, 
and the percentages that, that uh, Coral Condo put out there. <coughs> and based on the results that I'm interpreting, that the road is sufficient enough to do that. Um, the conditions that they have put out there were recommendations. It doesn't necessarily mean that the road is unsafe now to support that traffic. Um, it looks as though they're putting out there that these would be recommendations to make it safer if, if we were to go ahead and approve that. In my opinion, the only, after going through that, that survey, the only issue, the road is, the road can take it. The road has four feet of gravel on it. The, oh, the biggest issue, in my opinion, you are going to have, or you are not going to have, but we are going to have, is dust. Because to make that safer, we got to mow the edge of the roads and clean out the brush. That collects a lot of the dust, the, believe it or not, the brush on the side of the road. Oh, yeah. When I take that back, the people on that road, I'm not going to say they're complaining, but I get a lot of phone calls now about dust. And one thing I have tried to do since I started is stick with a budget. I, I try not to go outside that budget. I already have a $45,000 uh, calcium budget. I think that's going to be the biggest issue out of that whole survey. I, I agree it's going to make it safer, but the biggest problem we are going to have is dust because you're doubling the amount of trucks. And that's why this is, this kind of is the number it is, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just trying to look back because I thought it was only projecting about 40 to 45 trucks would be increase, and then there was a 25 percent, um, a 25 percent uh, increase that they wanted to average in. I thought they said it'd be about 70 trucks, 50 to 70 trucks or something. Uh, can you give this site, TJ? 40 to 60 trucks. Says on the first page. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, that's 120 trips if you go 60 on the high end. Because they got to go in, they got to come out. Right. Is it 40 to 60 trips, Matt, or is it 40 nope. to 60 it's trucks? 100 trips. trips 100 trips. So that would be 50 vehicles. Yeah. So that's what they're kind of looking at, not not 100, or what they're projecting, anyways. Does that make a difference at all? Because it's I still gonna be. It's. I mean, any added truck. I mean, the, the pit that's down there has a lot of traffic. Yeah. Right. I mean, the weather conditions are mm -hmm. You, yeah. A lot of these things are so variable for him to estimate that it's really broad. Right. I also want to take into account, though, too, is just the real the, the realism of, you know, so we've got a gravel pit, we've got a limited amount of dirt merchants that are hauling out of pits in this area. You know, I don't know if that necessarily means because this pit opens up and now they're going to have excessive volumes from, from I'm not sure where they'd be coming from. I think a lot of the volumes that would be projected would also be from just uh, if the price was better for per yard for this gravel or for that, and they decided to, instead of getting it out of Pine Forest Pit, they, they went ahead and went to the back pit of, for Angelini. I'm not sure that the, those figures were, would be looking at that excessive amount of trucking going on at those pits. I think you've got a, a certain amount of trucks that you're trying to divvy up, and that's what, we're gonna, what we have in this area. We're not going to have this large influx of trucks coming from uh, you know, Bonstead or, 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 you know, outside of our immediate area. Bruce, if I can offer a point of clarity, yes. Yeah, so the, the second paragraph on the page one does address that. And actually, so I, I think I misread it quickly in the moment before. They're, they're talking about 100 total trucks okay. trips. So 50 total trucks between both pits, which is an increase from the 20 to 40 that they currently believe is there. That number seems low based on all the anecdotal data that we've been given, so it, it, it seems suspect, but that is the letter. There's, okay. th there's so many variables when I've looked into this. Oh, yeah. Because you take, if you go down there and we take one of our six-wheelers and we go get loaded at Pine River Pit, we come back through on a dusty day, then you watch an 18-wheeler uh, logging truck come down through, there's, I'm not going to or how much more dust, but it, the type of truck really Oh, absolutely, too. just brings it up. So like a six-wheeler, the six tires touching the ground, but 18 makes a big difference. The amount of weight that's on the truck makes a difference. It's, it's hard to, you know, guess on what, <laughs> pretty much what, what's going to happen. I think, you know, one of the things that, not that we struggle with, but, you know, pursuant to, to uh, New Hampshire law and the RSA, is just, you know, 
with the conditions that are that are um, that exist right now, with that being a legal right of way in the only access from that pit to our town road, I mean, I, I just want you folks to know that our legal representation really pushed the fact that the two deciding factors for us, as far as an approval, was going to be the adequacy of the intersection and the adequacy of the road, and a lot of the other factors are kind of outside. Uh, Factors that are playing into the decision or how the decision will be made. Correct. All right. With the same attorney, just to be clear, was very clear with us that the planning board can and should put a condition of approval based on contributing to the cost of the road. Yeah, and I think I think what the uh, the planning board was looking at would that be like show up as a percentage? Would it be 100 percent? Would it be 10 percent? Would it be 25? We needed you folks to kind of, or TJ, to kind of give us a determination on that in order to make the, the approval and then set the conditions for it. I mean, I think the monetary, his eye works software is pretty incredible. It takes into account every little bit of machinery hour, manpower hour, equipment costs, materials. The only way really to do it is through a monetary cost. So the percentage is, it wouldn't work. And obviously, it could. It will, Should we it? give one to Bruce or no? Uh, it, it does have people's names on it, but I mean, yeah, it's up whatever you yeah, folks that's, that's you want to. Uh, I think it adds to the validity of the number. I know. No, that's all good information because that's something that we can review and chew on and digest and, and you know to get a good idea of, of how to go forward with this. I think, in fairness, because what you say about the road being open and public access and everything. There, but there are other factors to be considered here, not just but it's legal for them to come up through an audit that the world will take it. I believe there's other factors. And that, and that, not not disagreeing at all with that, Martha. We're just trying to look at, from our perspective as a planning board, what we're legally supposed to do and meet in order to, to, to make a decision like that. You know, I bring in other factors that, that we have no control over as far as dictating how they'll be carried out. So I think they just want to get some clarity on that so that we would understand what we we're going to base that decision on. Um, where the town was going to be at as far as their, their maintenance, the percentages for Mr. Angelini, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all contingent on if this is approved. So I think I'm good on, on pretty much everything that I needed to address. Can you think of anything else, Rick, that, that was brought up? I think you pretty much covered everything, Bruce. So I think you, you were going to say something? No, I was just curious if you need a board vote or anything. Well, that's, 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 conversation. that's where I was going to go with this. So, this board, we don't have any authority to govern. When you read RSA 67453, select board is not even mentioned in that. It's all the planning board. So the condition has been set, and the conditions are this road study. So the only thing this board can really vote on is what our public works director presented to us, uh, which is the cost, and that cost would be imposed against uh, upon that pit owner if this is approved by the planning board. Outside of that, we have no authority to say no to this. We just don't. I mean, that's legal opinion to us. We don't, we, we just can't. If we said no just because we didn't like it, which personally I don't like it, and I can say that because that's my opinion, because it's a pit in another town that is going to impact our residents of our town in a negative way. It's going to impact our town road. Uh, but unfortunately, just because my personal opinion is one view, I don't have the authority to put that into my vote. You should not. That applies to all of us. And I think all of us pretty much feel the same way on this. It's, we're stuck. What is the what is the repercussion for either of the boards to consider safety? Because right now that road is not safe, and you're adding another group of trucks. Okay. And so that and you both push back one board to the other about safety, and no one has answered that question about how the safety of our residents are going to be. Right. No, we we do understand that, but I believe that is addressed in the study regarding. Visibility, the geometry of the road. Yeah, you we're know, doing the, the different recommendations. Right. I think I listed all of them. Yeah. I don't think I didn't, but it, then that would, by that road study, would make the road safe for that amount of traffic. It's right. not safe for people that want to walk off their property and go somewhere. A lot of people walk that road for exercise. It's the only road that goes to the town beach, which is the only beach that the people in Osby have, and a lot of people go to the beach, 
Then they walk down, especially the kids, they walk down to Dunkin' Donuts and get a cold drink, and they walk back. There's a lot, there are various times where you have people walking that road, whether it's for exercise or to go somewhere, and the kids, I mean, really and truly, they need to be able to access the town beach and not be afraid to walk onto D Duncan Lake Road. And, you know, I mean, our quality of life as a, as a landowner and a taxpayer, I'm towards the beginning of Duncan Lake Road, and the, the dust, and I know you do work on it, but there are days the dust, dust comes up higher than the roof of my house. So to add, I mean, I hope you'd be able to find a way to, to support the taxpayers rather than a pit in another tank. Correct, and that's why I stated what I just stated. We don't necessarily like it, but our hands are tied. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean I can stop it. That's just the reality of the way the law works. There's a lot of things in life I don't like, but our hands are tied and we have to follow the law. That's just a simple reality of it. And their hands are tied in the Exactly. Well, there's a former case that was issued in the Supreme Court of New Hampshire that actually says it's a narrow reading of that RSA that you, and I wrote you all a letter I gave to Matt, and I hope you have seen it, yep. that says that you can deny this as a planning board for the reasons of safety. It's, you, you all are reading it as a very narrow-minded focus, and the reality is that I think someone needs to look at that case and realize that that's just as much of a factor. Do you know what the name of that case was? Well, yep, it's so right here. I, I, have a copy. I, I have this letter from the BCM Environmental Land Law, which I think is representing um, Some of the residents, yes. Right. And, That's different. Right, but he says in here, the New Hampshire Supreme Court has not provided any guidance on how to interpret the language of RSA 674. We have found another case so, that he has. 2016. Report. And what does it say? It says that the condition of the road, so if you take that into consideration, equal to that, equal to that is safety. Cites several RSAs. That the Supreme Court said right. you can you can look at this uh, endeavor from a safety point of view, and that can even trump the you know, condition of the road. But safety, we can't debate too long in this, but safety is a broad term. That can safety is subjective to whoever looks at it a certain way. So, to your point of kids walking down the street, I, I fully understand that. But the street I live on, the cars are 60 miles per hour on. When I walk down that street, my safety is in danger. That's just a, that's just a simple fact of the matter. So Do you have a shoulder on your street? No, I don't. No. No, no. We don't have right. any... No, I, and I understand, but my point is safety is very subjective. So what's safe to one person is dangerous to another. Well, but, do, but do we know what the safety concerns are for this road with this much traffic on it? That's. I, I, I agree with you about it could be subjective, but... There are some objective facts that we might be able to discover to say, here's what this is going to be like. Here are the safety issues around this. We don't know right now. Well, I think that's why that road study was done, and the big thing was the impact on the road and the visibility, and that was the whole idea of clearing the road so you can see to enhance the safety of vision for a driver so if someone is walking. So between a lower speed limit and the enhanced safety of brush cutting, in our opinion, the, the danger to pedestrians should be greatly minimized. I mean, every other town road is 30 miles per hour. It's already, what's the speed on that road now, 25? 25. If we that. dropped it as a board to say 20 or 15, and with the enhanced visibility, the, the danger to a pedestrian, obviously there's no guarantee in life safety, but it should be greatly minimized. Could be. Right. Could be. So. And they, could maybe, maybe um, not. When they did that study, they did it in April, and there is not as much truck traffic from my understanding in April as there would be in the summer because people are not doing as much construction. But, um, so that didn't take into consideration the conditions in the summer, the dust, the number of trucks, and so forth. And it also didn't take into consideration the fact that with all those trucks getting in and out of my driveway safely could be an issue just from the volume of trucks and the amount of traffic on Route 16 from Thursday night to Monday morning is horrible. 
I, I plan not to go anywhere on the weekend because the traffic is so bad. And if you add all those trucks to that amount of traffic, trying to get on and off of Route 16, it's going to be a disaster, I think. I mean, it's really going to be a problem. The study really doesn't, didn't have a lot to do with the amount of trucks. So when they did it, it didn't really matter. And when they did it for the dust, it didn't really matter because what they do is a fines test. They could do it any time of the year. They look at how many fines are in the dirt. They even put in there, they did it after a day that it rained. But if they look for the fines, and they can tell how dusty it's going to be, mm. even in the they summer. Can't, they can't tell about the traffic with the number of trucks going on and off of Route 16. Well, I mean, I think that, I wasn't, think that really wasn't part of the study. It was mostly to do they, with just they, the road. Yeah, what I'm saying is they didn't address that, and that is a problem. As far as the adequacy of the intersection? I mean, what are you talking about? That's what I'm trying to understand. Is it around pulling out uh, the amount of traffic that goes in and out of Duncan Lake Road? It's the volume of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on Route 16 and trying to get in and out or across Route 16 with those kinds of volumes of traffic at various times. And, and we all, I mean, let's be honest, we all deal with that up here. I mean, we have for years. I don't care if you live in Center Rusty or on Duncan Lake Road or on Granite Road. You know, you, you're dealing with that traffic. Well, there. Route 16 at that point is not very wide. You don't have two lanes. No. And in other places there are. So you've got a bottleneck on Route 16, and it's hard enough for the residents to get out and go get a quart of milk. When it's heavy traffic. No, I, I understand. And you I know, do but understand I'm that. just saying they, that was not taken into consideration, and I think it's something we should be looking at. Well, I think they, they did add some percentage volumes in there regarding that intersection study, trying to replicate what, yep. would, be, what would be coming. You know, I mean, we set a limit to that. The folks wanted this, this okay. study. We pushed forward with this study. Right. We got it taken yeah. care of. Right. But what I'm saying is that every time they did it, there were things they would not have to shoot them. Go ahead, TJ. He was asking a question. This is the only thing I'm going to try to say because I know you guys are going to go. But the trucking traffic initially stayed in, right? It's almost doubled in our own experience with cameras, right? So, and the addition of what you're talking about from six wheel or three axle vehicles to 18 wheelers, where we have coming in from Massachusetts pretty regularly. Um, and idling on. So for us, for my growing up here and all the different pits, we're, we're blessed with the glacier pits, right? We've got tons of them, but the price right now out of that pit and the other pit, um, the way that's going to get covered is to increase truck traffic and to, to meet the cost now of 31000 So the, the truck traffic is part of the safety issue in that volume. Because if you don't, if you have a truck coming down every two minutes, you got a window to get out. But if you have a truck coming at back and forth almost all the time, you don't have a chance to get out safely, to navigate the road safely, and to get out onto Route 16, where where that bottlenecks is. Those trucks are waiting to get out, right? And they need a larger space. So if they're taking a left, which is now the the new trucks coming from Mass. Um, all banging out on the left-hand turn is very difficult, as you guys know. Anybody living around here on a tough day, you can't get out. But if you have a line of trucks there, then us as residents, it, it makes it unbelievably difficult. Um, so just as a safety point, the volume of the truck traffic, and exactly what you pointed out, is part of our issue, is the dust and the noise and the foundation and all that sort of stuff. But that increased truck traffic is... You know, we're trying to work with the current pit and understand the grandfather clause. That, that doesn't come underneath your guys' auspices, so we appreciate it, and I appreciate your heartfelt. Father, I can't have my kids walk on the street. I can't, uh, I can't, can't walk my dogs on the street because it's dangerous. And that's, if, so, if you live on a 60 mile an hour, you can't do the same. No, it's 30, but they do 60. They're 30, but they do 60. It's <laughs> up. Uh, I deal with this one. Uh, yeah. Uh, but they have, hopefully they have a chance to move around. Two trucks been on that road for 20 years, two trucks side by side, and me or somebody had to walk on a horse um, or doing any of that, and, and you, you've maintained our roads. Um, you know that's not negotiable, not navigable, and safe, thank you. But that safety piece 
is where I think you can set a limit yeah. or whatever whatever it happens to be. We have a price tag of what it's going to cost based on 100 trucks a day, yeah. right? That price cost is going to go up if you have increased traffic, right? And we've seen what we originally was proposed at 20 to 40 trucks a day, and now we're up to 60 or 70, and you add supposedly another 20 or 30 trucks a day, and that goes up to 60 or 70, your numbers triple. Right now, we're doubling the cost of our road, right? And just to get it, and we already lost 10 feet. My property line runs into the road currently. So if you're trying to widen where I live, which, which is part of that study, you're coming 10 feet into my property. That's all, I've already been giving it to the town. And there's no more left. Yeah, I'm not. So, um, well, I mean, there is a, I mean, they had stated in there, there is a 50 from Guile Road on. There is a 50 foot right away that the town owns. Mm -hmm. And it's 32 feet up to Gow Road from Route 16. So that's all workable property with the town as far as brush control, et cetera. And the ditching really wasn't a huge part of that. As you read in there, they were happy with what the ditching was. But without us pulling that material in, I agree with you, it needs to be wider to be safe. We, those guys down there work on it. So when they're did, when they're when Timmy's grading, and you've got two triaxles tri coming at you, there's not a lot of room. So we got to make it safe. So that's pretty much why I put the ditching in there. We've got to widen the road a little bit. It probably should have done before. You've got a lot of trucks on it now. But with this additional amount of trucks, I feel that it's essential to widen it in places that we can. And, and like you said, it's not safe. They, that's road setting went off. They probably, I don't know this, they probably went off a 22 foot road, 12 foot lanes. But as you know, on a dirt road, spring, Early summer, that 12 feet comes in because it gets soft out there. Trucks can't pull over. And then winter, yeah. crushes it in another three feet. Do you have a recommendation, TJ, on, on the width that you'd like to try to attain by ditching? Like, like 25, 26 feet overall? Yeah, 26 feet would be what well, we're going to try. And we're not going to. In every like, area. We do what we talk to landowners, make sure they're all right with it. We're going to see about the trimming and see how far we can go down. i got to go measure it and everything. So. And this well, doesn't include the removal of the, the, the roads, so telephone poles of six grand. What's that? I have a garage right by the road. I wouldn't want to be, you know. Oh, we, no, we wouldn't. If you have something there, we're not going to. Um, well, one more comment. Then, because we really didn't even have public input on the agenda. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm speaking. That's fine. So, because then we can have to, we have to move along with this agenda. Don't we have a two o'clock uh, appointment. So, you have another comment, sir? Or? No, my only comment was the volume of the road and the safety concern because we're under your jurisdiction. So as that aspect, and we go to you, sir. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Oh, Bruce. You, Bruce, you're going to the next, next meeting and yep. make that decision. But the limit of the truck traffic um, is a, a considerable safety issue for us, um, and, and that contributes to all the other things that we, we can't really talk about. But that is a safety issue that is extraordinary. And, and the road to get to there, um, to meet those numbers, right, is, I think, as you, you had said before, it's going to be a little bit less. So just something to think no, about is I, the amount of truck traffic. I agree. And I, but, you know, I'm also looking at that um, since this has come up, um, and this is personally that, that Mr. Angelini has tried to address <laughs> everything that, that possibly has come up from you residents. He is willing to go ahead and put forth whatever needs to be done to make that road safe. It just doesn't seem to be enough for any of the residents. Well, and I don't. And, and he has a legal, a legal right to use that road. Does it have to be for trucks? Well, what, what would he do in a gravel trip? Pit. What, 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 what else would it be? Well, we can't. I'm going to stop the public input, and I'm going to move forward here. I wanted to make some. Okay. What? Point, what? Point, what point, 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 which was in the recommendations right. about the utility pole. Yep, we've already addressed that. You did? Okay. Yep. Already addressed that. That can be taken care of. So you need a motion from the board so you guys can move forward with how you guys yeah. move forward. Are you guys ready to make a decision here with this? I thought we were going to check with legal counsel. That's only on the contract side of it. But it will be checked. Yeah, we're going to check on that. We can. But the motion is to accept TJ's recommendation, he, and so Bruce can present that to the planning board. And, I mean, you do have one more meeting prior to our meeting. If you need to, you know, if you need more time to put that together and how it's to be worked. That contract is not, is, is going to be something not prior to your planning board 
Well, it's going to have to be done after automatically. As far as uh, for Between the town and Angelini for the maintenance cost. Right. No, I just meant about what the condition that you would want to place on that as far as the cost and stuff. Do you need uh, next Monday's meeting? So you're, you're solid with these numbers, correct? I mean, he's been so you can see it cool. now, but those are, yeah. that's, the, that's the cost of doing what we, we believe we're going to have to do. It. What we did is how much we have to do extra on this road. We just, I just pretty much went and said we do that truck traffic again. What am I going to have to put into it? And you can see it, it's laid right out. Oh yeah, out no, this out. is all good, like I said, to be able to bring those kind of figures to them, some hard numbers. Yep. So I guess all, the only thing that if you were going to vote on anything would just be a vote that that would be, this is, would be one of the conditions, however you want that right. wording. Well, well, I think that's what the planning board was looking for, was the condition of the cost to upgrade yep. and maintain that road. No, exactly. To meet the requirements of the road start. And, and, you know, yeah, and basically boiling it down to whatever whatever that percentage equaled out to be, whether it was 100% or if it was... 25%, whatever we needed for you folks. Well, this is, it's a, it's a, like we said earlier, it's just a dollar figure. It's not a percentage. Well, right. Well, we weren't sure uh, if the dollar figure could actually be in, in, in active. We didn't want to just surmise that with, with you guys on what you had to put together for figures. So we didn't really know if it would be a percentage, how that would be calculated. Would it be? Prior to that software, it probably would have been, but we have the tools now to give yeah. you all yep. figure, so that's the best and most accurate. Yeah, the software really takes into account every little detail to get a true cost analysis. No, no, things. that's all good. So now, because now I've got something that I can I can bring to them and say this is what it's going to cost in order to uh, to fulfill these recommendations. Okay. Um, like I said earlier, we really don't have much of a choice other than to present this to the planning board. As presented to us by TJ, um, so I make Can a motion. Um, what happens if there's more trucks and then you have more cost, right? Because they've already said if you're going to charge me for this, I'm going to lower my cost of my gravel, and I'm going to have more trucks coming in and out. So how do we? Um, it's just like the weather. I can't. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can't know, predict gotta, it's, anything. It's, it's money, so it's going to be it's costly. And how much more is it going to cost to have an officer? Take care of the speed. Well, they're they're out on patrol right now, and they're not on calls 24/7, so they have time to do speed. Because I mean, I haven't seen one yeah. a, t a town police officer, and they've been good when I've needed to call them. So it's not a criticism of them, but they've got a large yeah. amount of territory, and I haven't seen anybody looking for speeders in well, we'll address that later. forever. Any, so I'm going to move on. So I'm going to make a motion to approve the amount presented to us by our public works director for $31,585.80. I believe with the 4% escalator based on CB, CPI by the federal government. And I'm also going to add a reduction of the speed to 20 miles per hour. Yeah. The addition of uh, enforcement signs recommending yeah. speed enforcement. Um, is there a jake brake sign down there already? One. And there is? One, yeah. So, an additional jake brake sign at the entrance. And Are also. They fast enough to use jake brakes down there? Well, it's just. It's, I, I think they're using it down towards the hill down I think it's when, you, when you go yeah. past the beach where it starts to go down. And it decelerated at the, uh, before the 16. So, that gets everything unless I missed something in that motion. Is it 20, John? 20. Do I have a second on that? Any more discussion? No? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. I appreciate the position, man. I did put the sign thing, it's going to be a bit. Because we ordered yeah, signs. No, I know. We ordered, we ordered signs in January. We can't even get signs because of the COVID thing. So we ordered in January. So it's going to be a bit to get signs. Oh, I know. And we'll have the police department go down there and conduct more enforcement. Yeah. The other, you know, somebody at the planning board, one of the residents said something about the um, time that they open and close, and they're abusing that time. Well, so it might be helpful to seven, have an seven, officer yeah. check that. 30 in the morning. Yeah, so, so yeah. still I've been told that was, had been remedied. Uh, 11 o'clock. They've been just told. yesterday. Just yesterday. So, I don't know. Real quick, uh, Wednesday morning after the planning board meeting, I went down. I went, I went down on Tuesday night after the planning board meeting to, to see about the, the work of the water. On Wednesday morning, I went down. I parked at number 83, which is a, a roped-off driveway. I backed into that spot from 6:30 to quarter past seven. Two vehicles passed me. One of them was a ten-wheeler, 
and the other one was a was a was a private vehicle. But two vehicles passed me in 45 minutes between 6:30 and quarter past seven. I appreciate you going down there. So we'll we'll, we'll just uh, pay, I'll give you a we'll we'll pay attention to it more the best we can and, Sir, I do and, appreciate you going down there personally. and reach out to us if you see you know if you see a condition that needs to be addressed. Just reach out. To us. There are some trucks though that leave 4:30 in the morning that aren't they're not using the pit, so they have the right to do it. They store their vehicle down there, truck down there, their logging truck. Or their box trucks. So they're, they can, they're not. They're just using that road to drive. Well, not there's no. That's, yeah. Now there's a landing. There's a lot logging landing in the pit. So they're they're trucking logs out of the pit. Yeah, they can't be doing that. So but there is there is truck. There are. I know there personally. There's two guys down there that just store their trucks there. Mm -hmm. So they they're just going to wherever they're going in the morning. Those are two. I'm not speaking for anyone else. <clears throat> what can't they do? You just saying. No, he's, if, if they're running a logging operation at 4 o'clock in the morning, they can't be going in and out. That's a commercial operation. That's a they, violation of the zoning ordinance. He's moved by my office. I will. Uh, I'm the zoning enforcement. He does zoning and building. So yep. I can, uh, I can make sure that somebody gets down there. That can be addressed. If you have that ongoing yep. commercial activity, what's best? That's the same thing. Well, yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing in the evening, yeah, sometimes. And I don't personally notice it particularly because there's always something going up and down but um you know and i'm and i'm not awake at 6 30 in the morning <laughs> but um but anyway you guys are welcome to come back we have another pub i mean this is all a public meeting but we have more public input downstairs but uh, the vote has been made so. okay. Okay. is it possible to get once you get that uh situated for your um uh, conditions, but I get just a copy of that so I, I can get that to the plan board yes. so they'll know what those conditions will be. Yeah, you just want a letter from the select yeah. yeah, just summarizing this vote, right? That yeah, is that's perfect, cool. man. That's what I do. Yeah. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd give that right to Laura, and then Laura would just put that out to the group, or if you needed me to stop in and pick that up. Normally, I would just give it to Laura to distribute to you guys if that's good with you. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will see you later. Okay. Bye. Thanks for at least letting us talk at all. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, folks. So the next thing is going to be a non-public. For tax matters, correct? Must be got something else before you. Yeah, no, that's, that's what's on there. Let me call down to see if it's in the computer. Paper. Yeah. I got a ton of stuff going on here right now. money or funds, I hear a squeak yeah. and it blocks the, uh, <laughs> the amount.
Rick coming in too? Yes. yes. I just called down. He's not here yet. Cool. Rick Sager. $38,875. While we're waiting, I did have a call about um, Providence Lake Road, which is a Class 6 town road down in Granite. Mm -hmm. And someone bought property on it, and they want to maintain the road. And that's a, it's like a slippery slope. With, it's just passable right now. That's all we do is make it passable. Well, it's a class six road? Class it's six. Providence Lake Road, yeah. It's a class six, it's almost like Archie's Pond Road, and he wants to make it. So what problem is it, what problem is that? Create? I just don't I really don't know. That means he would plow it, he would do all that. I know we have the written contract with um Polish Crossing. Yeah, you know, Polish Crossing. But this is just a landowner that this is just a regular so what's, house. So what's the detriment to if he wants to do that? Like what negative is there on the So say he added gravel to it and he tried grading it and destroyed the drainage or whatever, we're gonna, he's not going to be able to fix it. Unless we sign an agreement. Yeah, unless we sign an agreement. If you create an agreement. If, if, a, if a landowner is looking to improve the Class 6 road and they sign an agreement with the town and the town's not going to be liable to fix his mistakes, I don't see anything negative when it comes to the town. Do you guys? So he's actually working to bring this up to specs? Well, just for his own use. Not, not up to specs. No. Just, just it'll keep it a class 6 road, but he will maintain it. He just wants it probably so it's more passable and he will do all the upkeep. But some part of the Providence Lake Road is class 5, right? In Ospey? Not in Ospey. No. Not in Ospey? No. I thought that probably is in Ospey. Huh? Probably is in Effingham. Is that a Wakefield? Right down next to the line. I know. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to make a motion Hello. to go. Hello, Ray. How are you? Good. I'm going to make a motion to go into non public under RSA 91A32C, reputation of risk tax, mat tax matters. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Walker? Yes. Sue? Yes. And myself, yes. We are in non public. Yes. Thank you. One fifty seven. I have to leave the one. Okay, I'm gonna make a motion to re enter the public uh, session from the non public. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. I'm gonna make a motion to seal the non public minutes from RSA ninety one A three two C. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three eighteen. Okay, anything else before I recess the meeting? Until 4.15? No. Matt, you got anything? Just yeah. the Whittier covered bridge. I don't know if that's going to be for a review downstairs, but the, the Hoyle Tanner made a formal recommendation to try to, if, if we can get the funding, to go forward with the low city. CPM. Yep. Yeah, so. we, can, we can do that here or downstairs. Either way, it's in the minutes and... Let's do it downstairs. If someone may have a question, yeah. that'll be in the audience on it. You got anything TJ on it, or can we reset? That was my first time. Uh, I know there was uh, <clears throat> interest in... So I don't know if this board is aware, but a lot of towns apparently only meet bi-weekly, have their board of selectmen meet bi-weekly, but a lot of the towns are significantly bigger than this town. I know there's at least talk about not having a meeting next week, but I'm not sure what the level of interest in sure. going to bi-weekly is. Next week we're not going to have a meeting. We have nothing big on the agenda. Um, we have some personnel that are going to take off for that day. So are you guys okay with not having a meeting next week? Well, wait a minute. So we don't. We won't be meeting the fifth or the third. What is it? Well, the twenty eighth is next Monday. When is the? What are you? Well, and the following. Week. The following week is. We'll be off for the fourth of July. Okay. Oh, because the fourth is That's the town employees right. get off the fifth. That's the fourth. Right. We don't lose it. I don't. I mean, if we have nothing on the agenda that's big, I don't mind missing. It's the summertime; it's slow. But if we have something that has to be discussed, well, I don't think we should miss two weeks in a row. Do you? 
Oh, it's up to the board. I don't know. Just that would mean we're not going to meet three weeks. No, I don't agree with that. No, because the intent to cut comes in and... Okay, so then we'll meet the 28th and then we'll just talk the 5th. That's all. It'll have to be a sharp meeting. I'll be celebrating my 53rd anniversary. On the 28th? Okay, I'm so. 72. I don't think there'll be much celebration. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here for the 28th, yeah. and then the 5th okay. will be. And then if you want to go to Biden. The town is closed. For that's, the holiday. I don't care. That's okay. fine with me. Right. But I, I, know we should, should I think we should meet every week. Okay. That's my own personal feeling. Okay. All right. We deal with that when we get a little closer. Yeah. Okay, and I guess if anything else I have would be downstairs. So. Okay, so then I make a motion to recess. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 321. Okay. okay, it's 415. We're going to reconvene the meeting. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Jewish Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Okay, I'm going to open the meeting to the first public input. Any public input today? Go ahead. State your name, please. Joseph S. Haas capital H-A-A-S, at hotmail.com. I live in Gilmanton, and I've been up here before uh, when it was the three women selectmen. I think I already stated that once before, that, uh, that we got into that letter to the DRA. Yes, you did. And uh, the last time I was here, I talked about the selectmen's warrant that I suggested not be sent over to the tax collector to get bill and collect, but that was already done. I mean, uh, since the, I made that... Uh, Correct. During that uh, time, mm -hmm. that, that day. And uh, since then, I learned that it's Article 8 of the New Hampshire Constitution that says any citizen, uh, wait a minute, let me back up, any resident, uh, uh, voter, and uh, what's the third criteria? A taxpayer. Any citizen, taxpayer, voter, or eligible to vote. You don't have to be uh, voting, just eligible. It's, it's in the new Article 8. It was put on the books back in 2018. Uh, anybody can contest the taxes, and we got into the discussion on the school tax. You know, ever since March 23rd, when the decision came out of the Conval case, that the what has been determined that the tax is... Uh, unlawful against Article 5, Part 2, because it's not proportional and reasonable. And uh, there is, well, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, I didn't have anything prepared. Uh, but getting back to Article 8, it, uh, you know, that three, those three criteria that can be used on two criteria, either your approval of the, uh, tax, of the town treasurer to cut a check to the SAU, is that on today's uh, mandate uh, folder or not? I, I think it was somebody told me it was last week that you did that. Uh, regarding paying the school tax rate? Yeah. Today we sent the check out to the school, yes. Oh, today you did it? It was part of the AP back in the day. The 980000 Oh, from what you did at 1 o'clock? Correct. Okay. I was hoping that uh, I would talk before that would be cut, the check. But anyways, that's water over the dam. But that, in, in Article 8, it says you, the, the citizen can contest that approved process and or the spent part. Once the SEU gets the money, if they spend it, then they can argue that too. But the last sentence in Article 8 says if there's another procedure, if, if you're not allowed to do it, and the other procedure is through the abatement process. So anybody uh, that... I was just told there's 30 people still waiting to do some deal, I guess, on the, to avoid the tax deed. Came down from 80 minus 50, there's only 30 left. And those people, I put a, uh, I sent you an email at 12.34 p.m. today. 
and the tax collector said, but she's just reading it right now. That's just my off the top of my head of what somebody could uh, write saying that they're giving you notice to file an abatement application. Because that way, it would be solved at your local level next March in 2022, the March 1st deadline. So you can't really argue those Article 8s unless you, if there's another procedure, and that other procedure exists in the abatement process. And that's where somebody, if they, you say that they owe taxes, and they could say, no, we'll pay the municipal, county, and SWEP, statewide education property tax, but we contest the local. And sometimes they could pay under protest, but then once it's going to be resolved down in Keene, you know, how much per pupil the state's supposed to pay, those people that paid that could argue in the abatement, well, we want our money back, and you'd have to pay 6% interest by statute. They put the RSA in there. And uh, where are you going to come up with that 6%? You know, that's the, the big thing, too. It would come from the people that don't care. They're just extra payment. They'd rather pay than fight. They'd go on preference rather than conviction. And so that would be maybe money that uh, you could get it from that because they don't care, I guess. So this, just to move this along, are you asking the board to do something or are you just informing the public? I'm just informing the public that uh, they can use that abatement application, it's online, it's only two pages or four pages, I think, and uh, submitted by the March 1st deadline. And, and the, I, I was trying to get some of these towns to say, well, the selectmen, to say that we welcome and encourage all applications because we understand the Conval case. If you would say that, it would be nice, people wouldn't be hesitant on filing those applications. And then you'd be like another selectman over there in Brookfield, he says, well, if, I, I heard that on Ed's uh, video, he says, well, if that were to occur, there'd be an onslaught, that was his word, onslaught of abatement applications, and we'd have to deal with this, and he didn't want to deal with it either. I mean, you didn't want to uh, hold it up on the selectman's warrant last time I was here, which is fine, I mean, that's just one step in the process. And I'm just here until 4.30, like, uh, that's the deadline, for the uh, people to come in to make their last payments, to prevent it. I thought there might be a ruckus out in the hallway, somebody arguing that I could help out because I went through this process myself. A tax uh, sale that I won in court back in the 1980s. So, you know, it's not, I went through the school of hard knocks and I just don't want somebody else being hurt because over in Newberry, as another example, some tax collector over there gave a tax deed and she errone erroneously did it and wouldn't correct it. You know, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. And the guy got so mad, he went in there and shot her dead with his gun. And they said, well, oh, what's the solution? We'll just put up bulletproof glass. And they said, no, no, the solution is to treat people with respect in the rule of law and to operate correctly. And that's Article 8 of the New Hampshire Constitution. If there's a dispute, somebody can come forward. And that's the process through the abatement. Four-page application. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you too. No problem. Any other public input? Go ahead. And state your name, please. Mark Mary. Uh, just a question. I, sure. I, I'm sorry. No, okay, sure. sure. Um, I didn't make it up for the one o'clock meeting. I, I thought from reading the um, announcement that there would be public input on the Duncan Lake Road thing. But I just have a question. Was the approval that you voted on approval of? The whole package or approval to allow the planning board to go forward? So like I say it upstairs, well the board did, that the only thing we approve is the road study and the cost that's going to be associated for that road to be maintained going forward. That's the condition the planning board asked for us to look at. Okay. We gave them an estimate based on our public works director analysis of the road. Um, it's up to the planning board at that point to whether or not to accept what we've given them put it as a condition, and approve or deny the project. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we're not missing out on the appeal period with the planning board. No, no, the okay. planning board still hasn't been meeting. They're still going to go through their process, and then you would appeal their decision if you see that. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. My name is Byron Martin, uh, down on Duncan Lake Road, um, and uh, wanted to add to the earlier uh, discussion and appreciate your position and appreciate you allowing us to have any kind of conversation during that time. 
and I appreciate the listening aspect. And I think not only you all, uh, the current pit owners and the residents are trying to make it work the best we can. Um, and the piece that I would add to today's discussion would be that our current use is set at a, as a certain number of uh, truck trips to allow us to maintain the road as it is and then impossible improvements. If we use that as a calculation format, that foundation, if it changes to more trucks, it's going to cost us more money to maintain that road. And so what we discussed and what I believe you passed today uh, has a certain lot amount based on an estimate of the current vehicle traffic, which is only based on one measurement on one day. Um, and I would suggest that there's a significantly more at certain times than what that estimate was based on. And I would ask you to consider uh, how much trucking can be done. I think the grandfather clause pit um, should be allowed what, what the trucking and where, where they propose that they would have be, and that we set a limit on the new proposed uh, trucking piece because our finances are based on that proposal. And if there's not a limitation in that, then the cost could increase significantly, as well as the trucking traffic, um, which is our safety concern. Um, so I'd like you to consider that and in your thoughts um, when we do appeal. I guess, I don't think we have the authority to set the number or volume of, of trucks coming in and out of a commercial business. I'm not asking you to set a specific limit. What I'm saying is if there's an if you if you have based the amount of money that it's going to cost to maintain that road if the Angeline Pete pit is approved, then that should be the what what's what we're saying you might have paid. If that trucking increases then we don't have, as a town, any restitution. We're going to incur that additional cost. Everything, even in the budget process, is an estimate. I mean, our highway direct, uh, public works director, he comes up with an estimate when it comes to the budget. Some years, we use a lot of that budget, and some years, we don't. I mean, weather is a big factor, and I think that's going to come into play with the maintenance even on that road. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, you can get major washouts. You get years where the weather is very generous. Yep. So it's really difficult come up with a, a more solid number than we have. Right. Plus, well, like I'd say this number is solid. Plus, yeah. like, the, the brush removal and, and things like ditching and stuff is going to be a fixed cost regardless of the amount of traffic. So I, I'm not sure that TJ would feel the need to have too much more variability there. Right. Uh, so. Any other public input? I was interested in the, in the gravel issue. For the record, please state your name. Oh, name is here from how we said. So right now, the project is in the planning board's hands, but you guys have a, have a and it's going to be decided on about the 6th, possibly? Uh, the next, the next meeting next week, next Tuesday. Okay. And so your role is only with the study? Correct. Okay. To assess a cost based on what that study is I got a copy of the study, and I looked at it real quickly this morning before I had to get pulled off to do other stuff, but it sounded like the road wasn't going to work out well. I mean, from what I read very briefly, maybe I didn't. No, know. Peter, do you want to elaborate a little bit? Maybe... Yeah, the road only needed, there was only, I think, five or four or five different recommendations. One of them being ditching, which wasn't a, a big problem. The other four were site distance, which was the biggest one. Uh, fines in the gravel, which we can take care of, and then dust. And we addressed all those in the costs, and really, like John said, you can't determine the weather, so it's hard. You have to do whatever you can do, best uh, estimate we can. But the road, the road study actually said the road was in really good shape. There's some places 18 inches of gravel and some places with five feet of gravel. So it's pretty much the width of the road, the site distance, vegetation, and other than that, they said the road was in pretty good shape. So. I looked at it very, very briefly this morning. Yeah. Anything else, sir? David, are you done? Nancy Pollard, um, Duncan Lake Road. Yes. Um, can you just briefly go over the other things that were discussed this morning, such as signage and... So we reduced the speed to 20 miles per hour. Um, we talked about putting an additional, like, brake jake sign. Uh, speed enforcement signs, put a sign up saying speed will be strictly enforced to ensure that that's clear. What was the other thing we did? Uh, the cost... 
sending some patrols. Oh, down. sending additional patrol cars down here to do speed enforcement to ensure that people are complying with the reduced speed. And what about the operating hours? Oh, that was that's going to be done through the zoning office because that falls under our zoning, so that would be dealt with in there. What was that? They will take it in and try to enforce it because it's not being enforced now. Yes, if they you can't operate with outside outside of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Yeah. So if you're operating outside of those hours, that's fine. Just break on the zone. Okay. So he'll follow up on that yes. without us calling or Correct. doing anything. He, again, he only knows if he gets an actual complaint. If mm -hmm. there's no complaint, he doesn't know. So that's the way it has to work. Okay. He can't stand down there. No, no, no. But there is complaints already, so. Right. Um, he's going to follow up. Oh, yeah. thank you. Any other questions? I have one. Go ahead. It's Dallas Emory, which I'll uh, speak. What was the cost, the extra cost? Around 30. Yeah, 31. Yeah, 31,585.80. And that's for just maintaining. It's for grading, grading, dust control, roadside dishing, roadside mowing. Nine additional visits yeah. per year to the site. So she's talking about additional police security, basically, to get down there. So well, we, uh, it, I, it sounds to me like we're, we're going to start adding costs at yearly, probably, on this project. Okay. I, I'm just I'm throwing it out there just so everybody knows you now. This is the beginning of a stackable cost every year is going to go up. Patrol cars are out of patrol. When they're on patrol, we can stop in there. I know. I know. It's just one more thing they have to do on a long list of things they already have to do. Uh, so I, I understand, but it is. It's... I don't, we don't disagree. Okay. Anything else? I just want to let you know that we uh, some of one of our tenants bought a stump grinder. Uh -huh. So we're now trying to go, like, we're we're trying to be fully recyclable. We didn't want to fill the place with stumps like it's been over the past. So that's adding another 15 trucks a day, seven in, seven out that live there. Never mind the truck traffic, we're doing that. So that's going to, because we're trying to recycle it, we're dying, we're making mulch, we're doing all that. We have a stormwater pollution protection plan in place for the whole pit. That's something that someone else might want to bring up that Angelina might want to look into because that's pretty much by the state of New Hampshire. So uh, and that's that's costly and it's a lot of paperwork and they do come and check on us. So there's a couple of things that change at the end. That pit was open all year this year for the first time because Bentley's trucks were hauling the sand. Because we need I needed to, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen. So I want to make sure I get my customers, because I'm gonna fight it the rest of the way. Because I have issues with him coming when, when he comes to our gate, he's got one mile to go through my pit. So I'm gonna make sure that every single truck's got two million liability insurance. I'm gonna make sure everybody signs in, everybody signs out, because they're not, I guess gotta protect my, what we got going on. We spent big money for the place. I got great plans for it. I don't need somebody coming, I know Duncan Lake Road's one thing, but coming right through my front yard every day, which wasn't part of the plan, but, and I am, going to proceed with other issues that I have. So this is definitely not a home run. You know? I'm not happy about it. So. And the board isn't even, but it's unfortunately our hands are tied as a board. There's only so much this board can do. Well, I, that's right. Oh, I saw yeah. I don't understand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know it's not, it's not your decision. I understand. Just letting you know how I feel. No, I'm, not, I I'm not sitting here saying I'm all for it and I'm welcoming the guy to come in because it's hard enough keeping the customs we have. And I just don't think it's right that someone, you know, like Hannaford's, let's just say, hey, is Hannaford's going to let people to go through their parking lot to go to market, market basket behind them in another town? You know what I mean? I don't, something's not right here. And I think Hannaford okay, is going to come through us. Awesome. There's no game, there's nothing. There's no win here. We, we, That's we, just how I think. We, we agree with you on that. Just tell you. Uh, go ahead, sir. Just a, a question. What is the complaint process? Now that you guys have uh, put the conditions on for the planning board to take out, uh, when we talked to the planning board a couple of weeks ago, they said, well, you got a complaint. Well, we complain at 5 o'clock in the morning to the police. They said, oh, I don't complain to the police. 
But who else is going to call at 5 o'clock in the morning? So he reached out to the zoning officer. We talked about that in the meeting upstairs. He was there, Rick Cousins. Okay. He does zoning and the code enforcement. That's his purview to deal with that, those okay. kind of complaints. But, I mean, if, if they're driving trucks in and out at 5 o'clock in the morning, is there going to be a problem at home at 5 o'clock in the morning? No, I'll have to go down and investigate and speak with the people that you're complaining about and inform them of the law within the town to make sure they adhere to it. Okay. And if they don't, they can get a, a fine. But if the police are to enforce the regulations that you set, shouldn't they be the ones that you... The police, oh. the zoning officer enforces the zoning regulations. Okay. That's under the zoning. Okay. So if the, if the zoning board says the hours of operation are 7 to 7, it's don't call the police with that, call the zoning. Call the zoning officer. Okay. And he'll be available at 5 o'clock? No, no, he's not going to come there at 5 o'clock. Right. But when he gets informed of the complaint, he'll go down and investigate and take appropriate action. Okay, I guess my question it's is... Not, it's not like a crime in progress where you're going to be able to stop it anymore. It's like a burglary or a robbery. Yeah, I get no, what you're I, saying. I get it. It's just not, it's, it's not going to be treated in that fashion. Gotcha. Any other public input? I, I still want to bring up the safety concern. I know that you say that you can't take action on that, but to me there has to be some recourse or some subjective way. The study doesn't include horses riding on the roads kids biking, people walking, and two 18-wheelers passing at the same time with people trying to move on that road. And to be honest with you, it's going to take an accident for someone, a board or a selectman, or someone to wake up to the safety of the road. And I get it, people live on dangerous roads, but this is a dirt road that's residential primarily. And the, the grandfathered pit was there a long time ago, and we've dealt with that, but adding another pit with that many more trucks, I can't believe at some level, someone in this town that is talking about another town getting tax benefit from it, uh, they're gonna get financial means from it and we're paying for it. It just, to me, is crazy. And I don't understand what recourse, if you guys know of anything that we can do, and I know in your opinion you understand where we're coming from, but what can we do as citizens for a safety standpoint? You're telling us nothing right now. Well, the safety parts are going to be addressed with the brush cutting and, and stuff to increase the visibility. So, truck the speed, the reduced speed limit is going to enhance the safety. All the things we discussed in the meeting upstairs. If you, what you can do is, if you don't like the planning board's decision, you can, you're going to have to appeal it from that point forward. That's within your right to do that. Yeah, it's just it's hard. We've spent a lot no, of we time understand. Over. We, like I said, we totally made it clear. We don't like it as much as you, but unfortunately, we can't just stop it. Can we grab a name for the minutes, too, please? Yes. It's Margaret Martin. Thank right. you. I'm, I'm really concerned for right. people's safety. Right. Any other public input? Go ahead, sir. So <laughs> um, I guess it came up with the, I guess I missed some of it, but it sounds like you'll you'll approach it from a safety standpoint. And, and there was a question previously as to, um, Visibility and meeting, with, uh, and it came up that uh, visibility was 200 feet. And so, as far as I know, Grell, uh, the the engineer firm, could not confirm that the town can even rem remedy that because they felt that it was unknown whether some of this visibility was from private property. So I want to address the fact that um, I don't want to see the town coming in or somebody coming in and just cutting people's cutting trees that are beyond the right of way um, uh, and any oops or anything like that because um, basically that was brought up, that issue was brought up and I think Jim Ryan's countered with that it's up to the homeowners to cut their properties and maintain that visibility. Um, I think that's probably a uh, the way I see it is most property owners will want that shrubbery there because number one, it's noise mitigation and it's dust mitigation. So whether he can say that it's, he tried to imply that, hey, you should be looking out for your safety. Well, safety is health and that's noise and that's dust because it's, it's this serious dust down there. So I want to make sure the town's not going to be coming in and cutting private property. Want to speak to that? Yeah, we, of course, there's a right of way, and there's two different right of ways on that road. We won't cut outside of the right of way. We can cut anything outside of the right of way over under a certain diameter.
we're going to have a boom mower come in, mow both sides of the road, and that will address all the recommendations on the road study. And we're going to do the, dip, the ditching, and then we're going to add some gravel, and we're going to do more calcium chloride. And that will address all the recommendations as far as what they believe is, is safer. Who's paying for it? Well, that's the annual, that's the dollar figure that I addressed earlier with another gentleman. I promise the last two questions. Go right ahead, sir. <laughs> um, when you talk about going in and cutting down the brush, when we went through this the last time when it was to do with the racetrack, uh, you came on my property, not you personally, but the town came on my property, cut down two trees. When we questioned about it, we got an apology. I don't want an apology this time. The other thing is these push-outs. Are we still using those push-outs for drainage? The washouts? Yeah. Yep. Okay, well, those have been non-existent until this road study thing came into effect. And one of them is on my property, and I don't want a push-out or a wash-out onto my property. Um, it, it's nice that we're trying to address the road, but it's not nice that you're going to come in and cut the brush down that, that buffers the dust and then put a, a washout onto private property. So I think that's problematic and, and we'll deal with that, but I just want it to be on record stating it. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, with the, with the trucks, one thing I do want to say, if you see a truck at 5.30 in the morning or 5 o'clock or 4.30, it's not immediately you need to call and complain because I know of three, maybe four trucks that just store their truck down there. It's not illegal for them to drive out or it's not against the zone, the right. zoning for them to drive out. There's one guy just before the pit, I know he hauls chips, he, he comes out. So just because you see a truck, I, I mean, I get the phone call, I'm sure she gets a phone call, so I'm just, it's going to be a pit operation pretty much to know, you know. Correct. So I'm sure we'll have some help from the original pit. Yep. Dave, you had a question? Yeah, um, I guess the thing I was trying to have wasn't the report, but I was wondering, is the report publicly available? Or the the road study report? Yep. I would imagine that's public property. Yeah. Okay. How easy is it to go? Is it something I can email or is it like email to you? Yeah. All right, great, thank you. Shoot, if you don't mind shooting me, I'll not spot it. I will, thank you. Anything else for the public? Okay, being nothing further. Martha, are you ready with your documents? Have the town of Osby check about your totals for, for week ending June 22nd. The payroll week ending is June 19th for the payday of June 22nd. Total amount is $87,115.45. Total accounts payable was $1,158,000. $261.43. Included in that amount was a school payment for $983,875. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have the minutes of the Slackman's meeting for June 7th. Completed and corrected. I make a motion to approve these. Second. Aye. Aye. I have the Slutman's meeting for June 14th. Approved and corrected. I make a motion to approve these. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have the Slutman's work session for June 9th. minutes. Completed and corrected. I have a motion to approve these. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Letter of it to read. It says, To whom it may concern, I regret to inform you that due to the circumstances beyond my control, I will not be able to fulfill my duties as a cemetery trustee. It's been a privilege working with Anne and Crystal. Sincerely, Karen Barron. Because that leaves that position open, so if anybody's interested, we will need another cemetery. We have uh, somebody who wants to do that position. Oh. Annie. Oh, uh, great. We can make a motion during this meeting to appoint her. Or... Angie? Yes. Yeah. Second. I'll, I'll make a motion to appoint Angela to the cemetery, uh, excuse me, cemetery trustee's position. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you, Angie. Doing it. I have a warrant for yield tax levy in the amount of nine hundred seventeen dollars and sixty-two cents. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. I have another yield tax warrant in the amount of five hundred eighty-six dollars and twenty-seven cents. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One more yield tax levy warrant in the amount of $1,345.95. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have a warrant, a supplemental warrant addressed to Kelly Skihan to collect $14 for a map for the property located on map 253, lot 16. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Request for a clerical abatement for property located at map 253, lot 16, located on the back of Chickville Road. The amount of the abatement is $1,428. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. I have a notice of intent to excavate. Map 235, lot 4. <coughs> the taxes have been paid. I make a motion that we approve this notice of intent to excavate. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have a yield tax levy in the amount of $59.96. Map 223, lot 7. I make a motion we approve this yield tax levy. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have a request for a clerical abatement. Map 29, lot 1, E8, sub E18, in the amount of $123.06. The assessing clerk recommends I make a motion that we approve this clerical abatement. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a request for a clerical abatement for Map 29, Lot 1, Sub E18, in the amount of $1. $122.72. It is uh, recommended by the assessing clerk. I make a motion that we approve this request for clerical abatement. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a request for a clerical abatement. Map 253, lot 15, for $10. It is recommended by the assessing clerk. I make a motion we approve this clerical abatement. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a supplemental warrant in the amount of $10. Map 253, lot 15. The reason that this property sold in May, right before taxes went out. I make a motion that we approve this supplemental warrant. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. That's all. <clears throat> I have a warrant for unlicensed dogs. It's to the Oski Police Department. Uh, pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 46614, entitled Warrants, Proceedings, you are hereby directed to proceed forthwith either to collect the fees due to the town of Ossiby to be turned over to the town clerk or seize an unlicensed dog for holding an inappropriate for holding in an appropriate holding facility. 
pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 46616 entitled Returns, you have until 7 5 2021 to return this warrant with a statement as to whether all the unlicensed dogs and OSPI have been seized and held under the provisions of this chapter and whether complaints have been entered against all the persons who have failed to comply with these provisions. I make a motion to approve this. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a permanent application for property tax credit or exemption for a veterans credit for 9 Elm Street. Our assessor approved it. We make a motion to approve this. Do have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have an excavation tax warrant for 125 Duncan Lake Road. This is for Green Oak Realty LLC in the amount of $219.31. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excavation tax warrant for 125 Duncan Lake Road for Pine River Sand and Gravel in the amount of $723.46. Make a motion to approve this. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have an excavation tax warrant for 20 Route 28 for Frederick Heckel and Barbara Booser for $140.30. Make a motion to approve it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a letter to the DRA stating that we will not be using form PA-28 in 2022. Uh, the reason why we don't use that form is that form is for towns that don't have a contract assessor. I make a motion to approve it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Old business. Today was the deadline for tax deeding. We started at approximately 120 notices when the initial letter was sent out. Today, approximately, because it may have changed by 4.30, we were down to about 26 parcels. Most people have come in and paid what was owed as of for the 2018 taxes. Uh, any new business? We just received an intent to come. Oh, okay. The only thing, problem I have with it is nobody's here to check if there's cemeteries of the taxes. Who dropped it off? It's the logger. It's coal logs. So now we have to wait then until it's reviewed. We really should not. No, we have to wait. Nice. Wait for review on that. We have anything in the Whittier Bridge, Matt? Yep. So the uh, letter went out from uh, Sean James Ahoy Tanner and an accompanying one from the town to recommend that we take the lowest bid which was CPM and construction, uh, that would require, obviously the caveat we have is that it would require significant state and federal matching uh, akin to what we're getting on the first roughly million dollars, where the town's only responsible for 4%. I'm not sure what will get approved, but we're hoping at least 80%, uh, which was the federal highways money, would uh, would be applicable to the other 600 and something thousand. Um, so that's the update. We're going with CPM if we go forward with the project, but that will be dependent on the DOT to allocate more funds. Right. So that's a big that's a big factor. Waiting on the DOT to get back to us. Correct. Okay. All righty. Anything else from the board? Old or new business? You got something else? Yep. So the update on the um, state and local federal uh, relief funds. Uh, so the allocation amount has increased from the initial estimates of 430 roughly to $458,959. We received uh, pretty good additional clarity in the form of another yet another webinar I've taken. actually screenshotted several of the slides for the board and the packet I've provided to them. Um, the, the excellent news, uh, as it turns out, uh, we do have enough of a revenue loss to qualify for that as our use of funds. So it's, a, it's the way to qualify. It's essentially the use of funds built in, which is that it can be used to uh, fund general municipal operations. So where a lot of the, the other uses were very specific to a health crisis or a water sewer, um, this would essentially replace lost revenue. Which is, in essence, going back to the taxpayer. One way or the other, it'll it'll benefit the general taxpayer. So um, we did have a uh, from our DRA forms the 434, which is the estimated adjusted DRA approved revenues uh, within a hundred or so dollars of 2.9 million in 2019, and it was actually down to 
two million four hundred forty nine thousand two ten was our final four thirty four MS figure. So that may change a little with the audit, but I mean that was significant enough. Um, plus the calculations have a built-in expectation of four point one percent growth in a municipal, state, or federal budget every year. So um, even if we had held flat, there would have been enough wiggle room to qualify for some of the money under that. We came in way less, so um, I think we're we're pretty excited about that revolution. Okay. All right. I'm going to open the meeting to the second public input. I have a question. Go ahead, now. Dallas Emory Center Hospital. I just listened to Matt talk about the money. I still never got an answer about conditions for the money. I know you gave me that information last week. I gave Joy my emails to have somebody contacted me. Nobody contacted me. So my question is still, what are the conditions for the money? Because in that form it says any. But it's all word specific. They say any federal program. Any federal program? DOC is a federal program, right? It's, it doesn't, it's all in wording. So, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out. So nobody really wants to give me an answer because she said they have a New Hampshire roundtable with all the, the elected officials that go and have their representatives. Somebody could have given me an answer. They're going to have a roundtable coming up this Thursday. Well, I mean, it seems to me that everybody has the money spent already. First, we were told we couldn't use it to offset taxes. Now we can use it for the municipal fund. So, I mean. We could use it just generally to offset taxes unless we have a loss of revenue. There's a distinct difference there. Well, if we had no loss of revenue, then we just couldn't use it to offset taxes. But well, we conveniently have a loss of revenue, so we're telling so we can spend it. It's all about spending the money. Won't you spend it? Uh, I mean, that's... Oh, I, and I know, I understand you guys, because I talk to you guys every week. I know, I get it. I mean, and I give you a hard time, and I understand that you know, like, don't like it, and some of my questions, but this has not been answered for like a month, and it's all... The, 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 you give me the answers that you get, but the answers are are tied into that somewhere, really, and nobody really is reading all of it. So we're going to round day one Thursday, I think it's 6.30? You know, I have to work. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was at night. No, 6 at night. Anyway, you can go there, they're going to have the representatives of... Hassan, and no, you go, they're having it in person, is what I got an email on. Oh, they're having it in person? Yep. Oh, 10? So they changed it. 10 o'clock in the morning. I wrote it down last oh, week. Okay. No, but she sent the email out. Remember? Was, oh, I They rotate, and I thought this week's is, is after hours. I yeah, 6 o'clock. Yeah, they sent the email. So anyway, 6 o'clock, you can go there, you can ask the questions to your federal representatives who are going to be there. Yeah, okay, I, I get it. Um, we, you're, we you're, are, you're my state rep right at the moment. We, we have a budget that should not be passed because of our governor right now. I agree. And, and he's now. changed the wording of our of what he's doing. So I would like to make sure that my state rep and all the state reps that might be listening, they been, they need to fail that budget. It needs to not pass because he can't be putting that CRT into our into our system. I do not agree with it. So. I'm just saying, you know, you are a state rep. You might want to put the word out with the rest of the state reps. Right? He's doing a lot of chatter around there. And he also made sure that he got his ability to um, take hold of the state again uh, and take it away from the legislature get thrown in there as well. I've been paying attention. I mean, I, I'm a busy person. I don't have time for this. But I come here every week just to make sure that everybody knows I'm still here. I'm still alive because I said a few things that people don't agree with. And... This is ridiculous. Every week I try to find out the same answer. What's good? What are the circumstances? Well, well, this is this is what they sent us last week. It was you can talk to this person, you can talk well, to that person. Sorry, I, I, I can't. Can you an How do you expect us to give you an answer? Well, so that's why I'm, I go to work. That's why you're there. Uh, right. Dallas, we're all busy people just like you. I, I know, but your busyness is the other end of it. I was sitting in your chair, I'd be working on that stuff and not what I'm working on now because I'm trying to get a camp together right now that's getting ready to open. So, uh, very busy. So, again, going to the round table Thursday, I think it's 6 o'clock. No, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, she just no, said, it's right? Not, it's not. It's 
mean, we got the terms and conditions. It's that's open to interpretation, and that's what you're asking everybody to do is interpret it. Well, I don't think anybody's going to. Yes. If you have concerns about it, it's likely to play out with the Supreme Court for something that's right. not even happened yet and that you're concerned about happening. So I, like, I don't think you're going to get what you're looking for. Just like Joe, over there issues. talking about the school tax and you should be paying. Same idea. That's been a Supreme Court decision. Nobody followed that one either. And now, uh, what's on the board of the board? There may possibly be uh, information on the board of the board in the hall. For the round table? For the round table. Yeah, I wouldn't have time to go to it or even be at it because I'm just too busy right now. I barely make it to this. I, and I have, to, I have to cut myself off to make it to this meeting. So I, I, I can't be everywhere. I'd like to go to the commissioner's meetings because they got the money spent too. So what Matt's saying, he wants you. He's got terms and conditions. You need to do your terms and conditions to rebut his. That's what he's trying to tell you. Gave, in his own, in his uh, own little way. You gave, need to put it on documentation. Okay? Yeah, yeah, you know I'm not here to write stuff down, okay? And I am. <laughs> <laughs> you can write it down. Because <laughs> you can help me out with that. Yeah. Well, that's what he's saying. You, they have terms and conditions. I read them. have terms and conditions. No, you I have to put it on paper, too. I read them. All I wanted to know was the definition of any, any federal program. It's Is 6 o'clock on the round table. I just checked my email. Okay. It's 6 o'clock at night on Thursday. Thursday. The going to be at Main Street Building. If it's not the Main Street, it'll be the freight house. Uh, and I'll, I'll offer this. Do you have a specific clause or a specific sentence even that you're questioning? Highlight it and give it to me because right. you're taking a multi-page document reducing it to a couple words. Oh, it's pretty oh, ambiguous. Oh, uh, trust me, I know. I went through that whole thing. While I was sitting here last week, I, went, I read the whole thing. It's, you have to go through every one of the statutes and laws they've already passed to figure out what it means. And, and you can't, I don't want, I'm just saying, they have not made it easy for us, the general public, to try to keep up with that. Okay? And, and it's, it, and you're right, it's all ambiguous. It's all, wording is everything. When you say the word any, any, that could be any federal, it's not just the one that they put down. They could change that in, in Congress. They could say, hey, we're going to pass this. And, I'm going to pass, I'm going to move on. Yeah. I know, I know, I can take up the space. <laughs> Anything else in the public? Go ahead, John. Joseph, <coughs> Joseph S. Hawes at Hotmail.com. Gilmanton. Uh, I was going to talk earlier. I, I had it in mind, but I didn't want to take up too much time. And I just want to give you an invitation, since I don't know if you made it to the Wolfboro information session that uh, John Tobin and Andrew... I did it a couple years ago. I was there. Oh, okay. Thank you. The other two have not, I presume, and did not. And uh, in, in that event, I just thought I'd let you know that, you know, in addition to Gilmanton, I also own some land in uh, Boston, which is under SAU 46, Merrimack Valley School District. And I was over there last Monday, and I talked during their public input too. And that was in the beginning and the end, which you, that's nice of you to have one, you know, two, two per meeting. And towards the end of that meeting, the chairwoman over there said that they're inviting John Tobin of the tobin Valensky team to their next meeting, which is July 12th. And they usually start at 5.30, they have one meeting, you know, like a finance meeting, 6 o'clock, and then 7.15. But they, they, they're working on the time because they want uh, John to explain to them the Conval case. And when I say Conval, I mean Katooka Valley, the lawsuit out of Keene. And, and what he's going to do is he's going to compare what he told ahead of time before that decision. And now it's an after the fact case. And they're allowing him to talk in, in, in non-public and also to the public to inform them. So you're invited to attend if you want. It's open to the public and or uh, by Zoom, I presume. You can uh, listen in. And that way, you would know uh, a lot sooner than some of these other communities because down in Alton, I was told by Mary down there, I think I told you this last time I was here, she retired. She said there are a few towns that have got together because the New Hampshire Municipal Association is not doing anything about it. They put an amicus curia into the brief into the case, but they never did anything after the fact. 
The only, the only person that's doing stuff after the fact is John. And I don't know what he's doing. I mean, what he's advising. Maybe he's advising what I told you earlier today, that uh, people that are uh, down on their luck and not having the money to pay their uh, property tax can get some relief. And uh, one last thing was, you mentioned uh, 120 it started out at? Uh, roughly, roughly, roughly. Roughly. Well, let's say 126, just to be uh, rounded off, because there's 26 that have not paid. And so my question is, of those 100, roughly, that uh, are taken care of, so much, so much percentage of that is, I presume, they paid it off. But then also, too, you have contracts to pay off under time. So I, I was just curious. I mean, is there like a dozen people that are under contract? Is that what's going on? I don't know. You talk about the payment plans. That would be additional. I'm saying, I don't know. Well, I'll ask the tax collector next time I see her, or by email. And I just would uh, like for you to attend that meeting on July 12th to have some knowledge so that when you're dealing with these people on signing contracts, that you give them full disclosure, I guess is the legal term, that you're, you're letting them know that yes, there is a contest going on and that we don't want to uh, pounce on you too much with too much taxes that are unlawful. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I guess that's it. Anything else? I got a few. Um, Matt, that 458 uh, payment for the um, rescue plan, is that the first payment of two or is that? Oh, uh, that's, I appreciate you clarifying that. That's the total amount, so we would get half this year, half next. Okay. Yep. Um, and then with the bridge, as I understand it, um, did you guys vote to go with that little bidder and then you just pay for state funds or is that a decision that has to be made? Yeah, you didn't make a formal vote on it. Well, you signed, you endorsed in my, the board had put TJ and I in charge of the bridge previously, right. so I drafted a memo and had the, the board sign it in support of what TJ and I did. It was a collaboration, I guess. Right. And I think you went on the numbers last week, at least, and um, you'd have to do, uh, I think there's 600,000 short, roughly. Yeah. yeah. The CNCPM bid was 1,653,426. And we, well, the original project engineer estimate was like 980. Yeah, so, so it's yeah, close to 700,000 difference. Um, and I'll be interested in the uh, roundtable. Um, and I'll check the bulletin board. I mean, if there isn't any information on the. Yeah, it's, I mean, my email is 6 o'clock Thursday, but I would imagine it should be up again. Joy Gagnon is what she would email correspond with. So okay. I'm sure she would be both coming with anything. Okay, I mean, are the representatives coming here, right, or locally? Or is it the round table? Or is it Zoom, or? or they're, 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 they're looking to use one of the government-owned buildings yeah. to host it. I have to firm up those details with Joy this week. Okay, yeah. but our Congress people are going to be? Well, they, they have liaisons for oh, federal. I, they, I, don't, I don't think that they actually come as their liaisons or their staff that participate okay. with them. Oh, is what I, 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 is what, I've never been there, but that's been my understanding. Is okay, are those office hours? I'm not sure. You'll have to ask Joy. It's, it's kind of a separate thing from this board. So. Okay. Because the like round table kind of implies that it's like the meeting that you're going to hear from your senator or whatever. That's me. the name of the group, the Austin Round Table. Oh, okay. She told me they were representatives of each one of them. Yeah. Okay. So it's probably their staff. Yeah, it is their staff. Okay. All right. Maddie has is like I said. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 509.